All right, YouTube, so what I got here is um, my upgrade package from my 15 Silverado. Uh, I have a 15 Silverado with a factory Bose system, and um, this right here is from a 17 Impala, but it's actually gonna upgrade my uh, HMI module to support Apple CarPlay and Android, Android Auto. And along with that, I, I got a different radio. Supposedly, you need this one too to go along with the HMI to make it work seamlessly. And this is a Bose radio that is out of a 16, and this one should have a HD radio with mine, which mine did not have too. And down here we have a what you call a Denali cluster or an F cluster. And uh, let's turn this guy over. This is a, a Specmo unit, but I got it from um, GM Parts Outlet or GM Outlet Parts, one of those sites. But anyway, it has the, the big screen in there. It's actually listening. Like Crud on it inside there, so I gotta like take the cover off and blow the dust and crap out. But this is the Denali cluster, and it's supposed to allow you to use the uh, the factory steering wheel controls to control the Apple CarPlay and whatnot directly from directly from the car, like it's all factory. So that's one of the things I wanted to avoid was having any kind of uh, aftermarket feeling, you know. So you want to push those buttons like the up, down, left, and right, and it should be able to control the Android Auto and uh, Siri and those kind of things, just with the steering wheel controls. But there's a list of part numbers that'll work, and um, it doesn't matter which kind of vehicle you get them from, just the, the part numbers have to match. And the part numbers might change, but they might actually be the same one because they've been superseded. And this particular cluster, um, they come in red and uh, blue like this. This one came from a Suburban, or is intended for a Suburban with the high-end trim, with like the uh, heads-up display and those kind of things or I'm like a Tahoe or something like that, but it's called the Denali cluster because it looks like the one that comes in the Denali's with the big screen in the middle and not like the, the individual gauges up at the top like mine has now. Hey guys, so I got my new Denali cluster here and I just want to show something. Look at that, cracked. See that? I, I had to take the lens off a little bit because uh, there was all kinds of uh, packing junk behind there that, that fell behind the lens. And yeah, it looks good now, but uh, this, this lens is super brittle, so you gotta be really careful if you're trying to take this thing off. I didn't even take it off all the way, I just took it off like halfway, stuck a little um, compressed air can in there and blew it out. But now it's uh, it's all good, but yeah, just be careful. That thing cracked, and I, I don't think it's gonna be too much of a big deal. It seems to be sitting on there. All right, gents, so I got my cluster back in, and there it is. That's gonna go in there. Um, here's my radio module this guy goes behind the, the factory unit in there and then here's the HMI and the HMI goes behind the glove box over here and I got my USB um, this guy goes in the center console so first thing I'm gonna unplug the battery and then I'll start getting unplugging with thing to note over here the first time well when I was working on the audio system for this truck I had just disconnected the um, negative battery cable over here and just kind of pressed it off to the side, kind of wedged it onto the side. And um, unbeknownst to me, uh, the thing reconnected. And when I plugged in my amp, there was a huge spark. And I thought I fried the amp, but I, luckily I just burnt a fuse. So when I disconnect the thing now, I take out this uh, this positive connection cap thing like that. I mean, I used to do this in my other cars, but I, I don't know why, i just kind of lazy. Anyway. And then when I disconnect the uh, the negative battery cable, I'm gonna put it on top of this to separate it between the, the car itself. So, something like that. See, so now it can't touch no matter what, even though it's just resting in its position. Cause this cable is really, this cable is really thick and stiff. So it's gonna go right back to the uh, the home position that I want. First thing I did was pull out the glove box. There's four T15s holding it, two on the bottom and then two in the top in here, and you have to open the, the top glove box container like that to get it out. And then it's just held in by clips and you just close the door. We're looking inside the glove box and you see that honeycomb thing right there, that's the cabin air filter. And then you look right above it and that's the HMI module right there. So I'm just gonna disconnect each one of those plugs and then the module should just slide out. It's kind of just press right old model out. You can see that one's the uh, 2.0 HMI, I'm replacing with the 2.5 HMI. Uh, so I got that all buttoned up. Now next thing I'm going to do is take out the the radio module which is hiding behind this screen here and you got to take apart this, you got to pry this silver thing off with some trim tools. So I got like a plastic pry bar kind of thing I'm going to use to just pop this up 
and then um, it should expose the bolts that are holding on this uh, plastic trim and the, the radio screen and I should be able to unplug the radio module out just the same way we did with the H. I got the bezel off and you can see there's uh, seven millimeters holding these guys on. There's four of them at the top. And man, my bezel was a real B to get off. This bottom clip right here was just a bear. It was just like bent in there kind of funny and stuff like that. So I really didn't want to come out nicely. But anyway, I left the heated seat guys plugged in, just kind of dangled down over here because I'm just gonna quickly swap. Just try and not unplug this. But anyway, there's three plugs in the back. You just gotta undo right there, and it's just gonna be easier to go get this radio out. Radio module up there. That yellow antenna looking plug was a real pain to get out too. I had to use like a screwdriver to press down on the top of that tab to get it out because that thing was really stuck in there good. It's gotta clear that big hump on top of the connector. You see that? the old one, and here's the new one. So we're just gonna stop. All right, while you're back here, I'm um, just tightening up all these screws because mine are all kind of loose. And if you have any dash rattles, that might be a all back buttoned up. You just press that. The trim piece back into place and now where's that usb what did i do with that thing i'm gonna stay in inside of my center console this one is the older style because it has that sd card in there and it might not work with the android auto or apple carplay so i'm gonna change it out with this one which is uh, i think it's from like a ct6 or something like that anyway hopefully it works but um this is what i was recommended to buy so we'll buy it don't mind the diapers and stuff in here this is a dad I sucked in and out of there um Here's the old one. There's, you can see on the side, there's these tabs that you gotta pry out. So I just stuck the uh, trim tool along the side. And I'll uh, so hope I can get the focus. I just stuck the trim tool along the side and pried up one side by the, or one side at a time and then kind of held it up until I could get the other side. And then the back, you gotta unplug that USB connector from the, well, don't do what I just did. Cause I just kind of yanked it out there and I just unplugged it a little bit and the connector, I hope they didn't break it. But anyway, uh, you're actually supposed to take this, this rubber boot off and there's some screws that are holding it down um, and then you just pull the whole cover off so we'll get that cover off just took out those four phillips screws which are kind of terrible to get out because they're all sticky and crap inside there because look at this terrible design chevy just assumes your drinks don't have any condensation on the outside or you're not going to spill anything in this cup holder which is dumb but anyway there's holes in the bottom so if it, if it gets wet then anything that comes out of your thing goes right into that foam thingy under there but anyway, here's the back side of that USB connector. There's uh, these two guys, and this is the one that I kind of just yanked out, so hopefully it's not busted. And here's the, here's the USB connector itself, so we'll plug it in there just fine, snapped into place, and both the connectors on the back side fit up perfectly. I'll click into place, I'll button it up. It's all back together. Um, everything fits okay, except for, see these kind of corners over here, they're kind of flopping up a little bit, but they're already flopping up a little bit anyway, but you have to pry on these spots because the screws are right underneath here here and there's one under there and one under there for the, the masterpiece of the centerpiece of this show i'm going to put the new cluster in here replace this standard z71 cluster and um to get it off you got to take this hood piece off which just kind of pops up over here you just kind of pull it up and take the clips off and there should be some some bolts pieces held with three seven millimeter bolts and then the rest is just clips that you take off and you kind of just um Pry the clips off from the bottom or just pull it away and then feed it through um, around that. Devin's holding on the cluster, two in the top and two in the bottom. I already took the, the two. It's a little hard to get out, but you can see it kind of locks into place with that that motion. Right. Get the old cluster, old cluster and the new cluster. Hey, that's the old one. That's the new one. A couple things to note, the position of the connector isn't the same where the factory one was or the original one was. And that, I had to pull the harness out a little bit, but it's really tight. So. Uh, hope everything's okay in that regard and down in the bottom you can see by the bolt right there is like alignment pin right next to that seven millimeter bolt that's not all the way in and that's uh in order to align the thing up so you can get all the screws in so i got all the screws in just loosely right now i'm gonna tighten everything up and put everything all right gent she's in look at that all right well i'm gonna go plug in the battery and we'll see. So this is gonna be the moment of truth it's been a long time coming i've waited uh couple of months for all these parts to come in and go out and come back uh, after reprogramming a um, little bit about the cost too if you're just doing the upgrade on the the radio module and the hmi module in order to get your carplay on the original speaker i mean original head unit and whatnot um it's going to cost maybe around 250 bucks to 300 bucks in um pieces like the in the two modules maybe 200 bucks for those and then another hundred dollars to get them programmed and uh consider the shipping both ways for that 
Um, the cluster is the real expensive part because this cluster itself costs about $400. The programming is about 250 bucks and it's large. So you can imagine shipping back and forth isn't uh, the cheapest, especially where I live. But anyway, so I'm going to stick the key in. Hopefully everything has been programmed correctly and plugged in correctly and we'll see what happens. I'm anticipating all the, the every time you unplug the battery, it, uh, um, all the, the best things reset, but that's a good thing. I just showed the mileage on there. Ooh, look at that. All right, well, so far so good, but look at that cluster. Oh, baby, let's try and get this thing going. Ooh. All right, why is that? That thing's like too bright. It's like not focusing on it. Well, so far the steering wheel control buttons work. I can hear audio coming out of the speakers right now. Um, but I didn't program anything. Anyway, um, let me go poke around in these menus for a little bit. But so far, so good. The thing is working. And look at that colors. I mean, everything's color matched now. That was the thing I was worried about was that um, if you get the red cluster, it's not going to match. You know, like the red one from the GMC. Oh, look at that projection option. Oh, yes. All right. That's what I was looking for. That projection option right there. That's the... Uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Uh, look at this cluster. That big screen is so nice. I know you can't really see it that good on my camera because this thing's not picking it up really well. But it's actually very beautiful in real life. Oh, well, look at that. That's another bonus feature that I didn't think about uh, mentioning. But I see that HD icon. This one now has HD radio. Uh, it's definitely not 32 degrees. It's going to take a little while before that calibrates along with the, the compass, I think. But anyway. That's pretty cool. It's got HD radio now. The 2015s were skipped, I guess, having the HD radio. But this module, I think, came from a 2016. So, come to HD radio. Guys, got the Android Auto finally set up. Uh, at first, it was giving me Android Auto Error 8. When I looked it up, it was something about the time zone, the time not being set correctly. But I, I went back and forth. The times are set correctly. There's no time zone options on the Chevy MyLink, that, as far as I can tell. Uh, my only thinking was that the 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 thing wasn't calibrated correctly and it just needed a little bit of time because I just let the car sit for a little while, came back, plugged it in and the, the error changed so it's not um, error 8 anymore. It, it gave me an error 16 but it wasn't because I it, I didn't accept the the, the legal, legal um, jargon message that pops up on the phone itself when you plug it into the USB. So let's go ahead and continue on here. All right, guys, working good so far. Got the Android Auto, the Waze, everything's all working. The audio is okay. I gotta redo my system though, cause I, uh, I have um, a subwoofer from the back, and in order to get the signal, I tap the Bose amp, and I'm using the audio control LC2i um, to pull the signal. And now, after I had it calibrated with the old radio, now it sounds totally different with this one. So I gotta redo all the settings and see how to make that. All right, a few final thoughts about this. Uh, I still haven't gotten the temperature to to get get correct, but uh, that's not a big deal. Change from 32, which was uh, kind of the default after you plug in unplug the battery, and uh, the cluster itself is pretty cool. I, I'm I'm digging this thing so far. I really like the screen. Uh, if if it's worth the cost, I don't know. It probably costs about 700 or 800 dollars total in order to get this thing in there. Um, that doesn't count the HMI module and the radio module and the program for those, which are extra. But having this nice big screen in the middle, it's kind of neat. And um, definitely definitely worth it to have the Android Auto because you can use Waze and Google Maps and whatever music apps that you have. Uh, one bummer thing is that I haven't been able to uh, get it to work with like regular Bluetooth audio seamlessly without having to disconnect the phone first. And uh, that sucks because you're trying to, if you're trying to watch YouTube videos or something like that on your phone, for the audio, it it you just can't do it on here. I haven't tried downloading an app, the YouTube Music app or anything like that yet, but um, you can't just use, use the regular, you can't do the regular YouTube with this thing. But overall, I would say I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It wasn't it wasn't that easy, but it wasn't uh, very difficult either, just because my my truck was particularly tight to pull apart like these taking all these things out of here was pretty difficult uh, the other guys on the internet made it look a lot easier than uh than what i got now but 
That's all right. It's in there. It looks good. And uh, I'm going to keep it, guys. So, you know, I said that the uh, Android Auto um, wasn't really working with the uh, just regular Bluetooth audio and the YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, it, it does now. So I don't know what was happening. It wasn't working, but now it's not really consistent. But the if I just play like a YouTube video while the thing is plugged in, the phone is both connected to Bluetooth and it's connected to the uh, the car using the USB cable. So I think some of the, the Bluetooth functions still can, audio functions still can come through and you can also have the Android Auto running at the same time. So I was, I was just playing a YouTube video, so I got cut off. Anyway, I was playing a YouTube video and the, uh, the sound just started working, so that's not uh, an issue anymore. And I also downloaded the uh, YouTube music app and that's kind of glitchy, but I don't blame it on this, uh, don't blame it on the, the unit itself here in the truck but it's more a problem of uh, the software. But I have to launch the YouTube music on my phone and then it'll work on on here. But if I try and launch a YouTube music from Android Auto, it says I don't have the permissions or something something like that. But anyway, um, so far so good. Yeah, really happy with the system now. Uh, the gauge cluster, I don't know. I could have skipped spending all that money on that. It's really nice, but uh, yeah, I, I could have skipped that.